Final Fantasy VI. One of my favorite games of all time, and one of the best games ever created. I can't tell you how many hours I've put into Final Fantasy VI over the years. I played it and replayed it constantly on the SNES, then multiple times on the PlayStation re-release, another few times on the GBA, and a couple times on emulation. I think I've purchased every iteration of this game to come out other than the mobile port, and when the Pixel Remaster comes out, I'll likely jump on that for PC as well. I know that mobile port gets a lot of hate, but I haven't played it. I'm not a huge fan of the character sprites, but I'm sure that's not that bad. I don't know. Since starting my channel in 2014, I've attempted to review this several times. Uh, once as a head-to-head -head matchup against Chrono Trigger, uh, one as merely a review, and once as a full-blown character analysis and story analysis that I ended up pouring eight pages of text into. It was like 3,000 words, and I was not even halfway done. And I just kind of lost steam. It would have been a bear and one that I wasn't really ready to tackle. So instead I'm going to do what I've had the most fun with recently, and that's do a shorter review, about 10 minutes long, and um, yeah, the way that I've been doing things lately, have get, it's really given me new life. Final Fantasy VI was released in Japan and North America in 1994. Those poor PAL region bastards apparently didn't get it until 2002, as Final Fantasy was barely a thing anywhere but Japan and North America, I guess. I don't really remember what year I finally got my hands on the game, but I'm fairly certain it had been out for a while. I'd already played Final Fantasy IV by the time I played VI. I do remember my first experience with it, though. I had a babysitter who worked at a video rental place, and she'd rent a few random-ass games for us when she babysat. I think I first played Bubsy this way, too. But I definitely remember getting to play Final Fantasy III. I don't need to go into the numbering conventions here, right? And I was like, where the hell's Cecil? Who are these people? I hadn't played the first game at that point, so I had no idea that the games didn't all feature the same characters. There was a save game on the rental cartridge that was in Vector. I don't know how I remember exactly where they were, but I do remember thinking Sabin looked a lot like Guile from Street Fighter 2. I didn't really dive into it until I got the game from my parents. And once I did, I fell in love with it. Uh, one of my fondest memories was playing all night. And before the sun came up, my mom came downstairs, and I asked her, uh, I'm sorry, did I wake you up? And she said, no, she was getting ready for work. So I think that was like the first time I had stayed up all night playing a video game. That's a lot of exposition and rambling for me, so let's talk about the game itself. Final Fantasy VI has a legendary opening title screen. After a brief static screen that has the title with some of the developer and publisher info, you're thrown into what looks like a storm. Dramatic music swells until finally the title comes up in burning letters, with a digital chorus of operatic voices singing at you. This perfectly sets up the tone for the game. And if that's not cool enough, it launches you straight into the opening cutscene, telling you of a land bereft of magic, with people relying on coal and steam-powered machines to fuel society. Yeah, this game is steampunk, and I don't think I ever realized that until well after steampunk really became a thing among cosplayers and roleplayers. There is an evil empire that's trying to revive magic through their experiments on magical beasts known as espers, and after discovering there is one in the distant mining town of Narsh, they send two Magitek soldiers and their enslaved mysterious woman who has control of magic herself. She's the only one known to be born with the gift of magic in thousands of years. And for the first chunk of this game, you'd think that this young woman named Terra is the main character. And well, you'd be kind of right. You see, the developers intentionally created Final Fantasy VI so that players could kind of decide who they wanted as the lead character. A good portion of the game forces you into certain parties controlling certain characters, but after all the characters have been introduced and a few quests completed with each, you're largely able to bring along whoever you want at any given time. Do you want Terra to be the lead character for your playthrough? Easy. How about the dashing treasure hunter Locke? Or Cyan the noble samurai? Technically you can bring anyone through as your main character, and tons of people I've talked to over the years all have their favorite characters they like to use. There are 14 playable characters in the game, and some are actually optional. 
While you get a very large cast to choose from, that actually highlights a minor weakness in the story. Some of these characters are flat as hell, and by flat I mean they have like one or two defining traits, never really evolve at all through the game, and are sometimes cast off by a good number of fans. Gao, the wild boy who can learn skills of the majority of the monsters in the game, is actually a pretty powerful character, but he has like one cutscene devoted to his character growth throughout the whole game. And because the time needed to make him a viable party member is way more than other characters, I had largely wrote him off as crap for years. I now know that he can be one of the more broken characters in the game. You can have him cast powerful second level elemental spells early in the game for no MP cost with the trade-off that he's uncontrollable for fights. But in those early portions of the game where you don't have easy access to those spells yet, he can tear apart parties of enemies with very little effort. Really, the whole story is pretty damn good and portrayed really well. I always kind of took Final Fantasy VI's cutscenes for granted through the years because I never really played it back to back with some of its competitors. Seeing some of these cutscenes after recently playing through Breath of Fire 2 and Lufia 2 really opened my eyes to how good these are all put together. The characters aren't quite as detailed, I think, as like Breath of Fire 2, but they're animated so much more expertly. The movements of these characters and their cutscenes give Final Fantasy VI a more cinematic feel. The characters aren't just standing still and delivering their lines. They move to face the character they're talking to, or they pace around as if they're anxious or they're thinking about something, or they'll have comical little surprised expressions or more threatening poses depending on the situation. I believe that the way the characters are animated and shown in these cutscenes really helps to endear them to players. The dialogue is probably one of the better translated pieces on the SNES. Sure, there are still some weird choices and errors here and there, but you're never left wondering what characters are referring to, and you never really feel lost. The narrative is easy to follow even with the twists and turns. The thing I want to note is that after years of playing this game, I've tended to go on autopilot when cutscenes come up. And going into this playthrough specifically looking to critique the game, I've noticed things that I had either missed before or just forgotten about over the years. Story-wise, Final Fantasy VI still holds up, and even with its initial translation on the SNES. I couldn't tell you how the GBA translation compares, as I haven't played that version in years, but if you're stuck playing the original SNES version for whatever, don't worry, it's still good. The graphics and sound play a very large part into how the story and the entire game is presented. Like I said earlier, the character sprites may not be the best on the system, but they're animated very well and detailed in a way that they definitely feel alive. The world around the characters is so well crafted. The colors are kind of muted, reflecting the state of the world, literally in a sense, especially after the big midpoint part of the game. Enemies are all static and don't move or anything in battle, but are based on series artist Yoshitaka Amano's signature art style and are represented pretty well here. There are a few that are kind of hard to make out, but for the most part, they look great. The overworld map is done in Mode 7, giving it an almost 3D look where the areas north of the character seem to be in the distance, where things near the south seem a lot closer. And when the characters transition to riding chocobos or airships, you can actually see the horizon and the sky. It's a neat effect, and that was pretty stunning when the game was new, at least to me. The sound, on the other hand, well, shit, how do you describe it? Virtually every track is a masterpiece. There are a few pieces here and there that are just okay. The silly track when comedic relief happens comes to mind, but everything else? Holy crap. The SNES is at its best here. You'd think there's a tiny orchestra in your system playing these tunes for you. There is so much instrumentation, melodies and harmonies weaving around each other, strings, percussion, brass, wind instruments, overdriven guitars and bass, synthesized opera voices, which admittedly sound a little silly today, but man at the time, holy crap. There are some really good soundtracks on the SNES, but Final Fantasy VI is my absolute personal favorite. Also, something something Dancing Mad is the best boss music across the entire series, or maybe even the best boss music of all time, fight me. The sound effects, which I don't think get enough credit, are really excellent as well. The way your character's weapons sound when they strike an enemy is always satisfying, and the spells all sound like elemental magic spells should. The level 2 spells, Fire 2, Ice 2, Thunder 2, all sound really cool, and I've always thought so. I can hear those effects in my head when I'm not playing the game. As for the gameplay, well, it's a Japanese turn-based RPG with random encounters. 
You control your character on a map, exploring until you hit a battle, where the game will transition to a separate screen to beat up enemies. Random encounters are not always great, but I'd argue that in Final Fantasy VI, they aren't nearly as bad as its predecessors or contemporaries. The rate isn't super frequent as seen in other games, and in places where battles do occur more frequently, it's not that bad. I say this because battles in Final Fantasy VI move fairly fast. There aren't a ton of animations to wait to play out. The animations that are there really help with the presentation of the battles and make them visually appealing, but without slowing things down, as was the case with Breath of Fire 2, which I reviewed a while back. In the SNES version, there's next to no loading time switching between the map and the battle screen, which I can't say about the PS1 port, unfortunately. So quick, snappy battles really help keep things from becoming too much of a slog. Each character brings their own look and personality, and they all have a selection of weapons and armors that they can equip. I like these earlier Final Fantasy games where one weapon could be equipped by multiple people, rather than later entries where each character is largely identified by the type of weapon they carry. Characters all have their own skills as well, with some being way more useful than others. Locke can steal, which helps a lot in the early game if you routinely steal with him. I had no problems with healing items this time through because I was constantly stealing tonics, potions, and phoenix downs off enemies. Terra can morph into an esper, doubling her attack power. Edgar has some super useful tools, etc, etc. There are some characters who have some not-so-useful abilities. Cyan has a gauge that you can fill to have him do a cool attack, but it takes way too much time to fill up to the higher levels. So you're better off just doing his level 1 skill or bringing along a Sabin or Edgar that can pull off an attack without waiting. Realm has a sketch ability that allows her to copy an enemy skill and it's buggy. It can even crash your game. And it's really not all that useful for anything other than learning enemy skills for her grandfather, Strago. And the way you learn magic spells in this game make a lot of those abilities kind of useless, especially later in the game. Everyone can learn every spell via the Esper system. And I typically end up teaching everyone every spell by grinding at some key points just because I like seeing those filled up spell lists, even if I don't use every one. You'll typically stick to elemental attack spells and healing spells, and when everyone can learn those, you exploit enemy weaknesses. Stuff like Edgar's tools and Cyan's sword skills get outclassed pretty early on. That's not to say character-based skills become completely useless. They're still fun to use and can dish out some quick damage. The Esper system also allows you to buff character stats, so characters that can't initially deal a lot of damage with spells, for example, you can sort of correct. And characters that are already good at spells, you can max out pretty fast so they become super-powered gods. Oh, and worried about MP? Well, use the Osmos spell and you can quickly refill your MP on most monsters. But that's not to say that maxing out your character stats and magic isn't fun, because it really is. I love making a bunch of super-powered characters to carry me through the endgame. And because I'm attached to the characters due to their personalities or how cool they look or whatever, it is fun to be able to buff up whoever you want and make them your main party members. You could even challenge yourself not to use the Esper system, relying only on the few spells Seelys and Terra learn innately and stuff like Strago's Blue Magic and Gao's Rages. Yeah, I pronounce it Seelys, I don't know, is it Celeste? Dude, video games, right? I haven't done this challenge yet, and I really want to, but the allure of superpowering my characters is just too great sometimes. Final Fantasy VI is not perfect, and there are a few minor nitpicks I had with this last playthrough. Getting espers located in the auction house is a pain in the fucking ass. Whether they show up is based on percentage, and you can sit there waiting through auctions that you don't want to spend money on over and over until the right piece of magicite shows up. I did find out that you can kind of manipulate the RNG of this and get what you want to appear, and I don't know if I completely figured it out, but it did seem to help. Trying to steal certain items can be annoying too, since it's all based on percentages and RNG, as well as waiting for right enemies to pop up on the Velt so Gao can learn appropriate rages. Really, some of the RNG aspects are what annoy me most, but they're all relatively minor in the grand scheme. This has gone probably well over the 10 minute mark that I mentioned earlier, but right now I feel like I've exhausted all I want to talk about with Final Fantasy VI this time. Maybe in the future I'll do something like those character analyses or story analyses that I mentioned earlier. I, I really would like to do like a 
single video on certain characters or maybe do a video on every character. Who knows? I love this game so much. And I have so much to say about it, but just not a whole lot of time to say it. And I don't want this channel to become a Final Fantasy VI love fest. So, yeah, whatever. It's a freaking amazing game. And it's one of the best games of all time, bar none. It's just a damn shame Square Enix never gave it like a 3D remake like Final Fantasy IV got. That would have been really cool. But, you know, that's okay. Because it's still awesome the way it is on the original port. And this pixel remaster is looking promising. We'll see how well that comment ages, but for right now, I'm, I'm mildly optimistic. But hey, that's it. That's all I got. Final Fantasy VI is amazing. Play it if you haven't. Um, it's just probably one of my favorite games of all time, easily. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. Later.